happening. Morning always signals to us a time of renewal, a time of clarity, a time of refocus, a time of rebirth. Then came the morning. The darkness and despair of what you felt. The darkness and the struggle of what you're feeling. The darkness and despair of how people treat you. The darkness and despair of your own limited conditions is dispelled by the morning. Then came the morning. Jesus got up out of the tomb on that early Sunday morning with all power in his hands, all power given unto him.
won the victory, Bethel. Hallelujah. He's won it. We were here Friday, but tell your neighbor, say, Sunday is here. Yeah. Tell somebody else, say, Sunday is here. So when they thought it was finished, yes. hallelujah, Sunday came. Hallelujah. And he's not here, but he's with our God in heaven. Hallelujah. 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 What a wonderful thing. You were. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus.
Somebody say hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be glorified. If he's been a good God to you, you could open up your mouth. Command your mouth to praise him. Command your hands to praise him. Lift your hands, all ye saints, and let the people of God say hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the one who the grave could not hold and the cross couldn't keep. Oh, hallelujah. He's wonderful. Praise him. Hallelujah. We bless you all in this house. You're worthy of all praise. We glorify the Lord God. you but I came to rejoice my God when I think about the cross and then I think about the grave you see death is at the cross but victory is at resurrection anybody resurrected today anybody res any victorious people in the house today if you are victorious I want you just wait before the Lord come on just say I'm a victorious believer today I have overcome because of the blood of the Lamb. And I can tell you, it's nothing like when you know you got the victory. And you may be sick, but your body may be sick. But your spirit man got what? The victory. You may not have any money, but because you know who owns all things in heaven and in earth, you got what? The victory. Come on, somebody. Anybody got the victory? Oh, I'm praying. Praise for the fact that he alone, he 
alone is worthy to be praised. We have the victory today. That's our theme today. We have the victory. We go walk like it. We go talk like it. We go act like it because we are a victorious people. The word of the Lord God comes to us this morning from Revelation chapter 5. And we're going to read and it says from the New Living Translation as we begin this, I mean, exciting, celebrative service today. A service of thanksgiving. A service of high praise. A service where we show our gratitude to God who is indeed worthy. And it reads, then I saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who was sitting on the throne. There was writing on the inside and the outside of the scroll. And it was sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel who shouted with a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals on this scroll and open it. But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll and read it. Then I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. But one of the 24 elders said to me, stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. He is worthy, somebody, yeah. to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb that looked as if it had been slaughtered, but it was now standing between the throne and the four living beings and among the 24 elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which represent the sevenfold spirit of God that is sent out into every part of the earth. He stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. And when he took the scroll, the four living beings and 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they held gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang, y'all, a new song with these words. You are worthy to take the scroll and break its seal and open it for you were slaughtered and your blood has ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation and you have caused them to become a kingdom of priests for our God and they will reign on the earth lift up your heads all ye gates and be lifted up the everlasting doors and let the king of glory come in who is the king of glory Bethel the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle lift up your heads O ye gates Bahamas and be lifted up the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in Lift up your heads, clap your hands, stamp your feet, shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph and let the King of glory come in. One more time for the Father, put your hands together. One more time, victorious people, for the Son and one more time for the Holy Spirit. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Coming now with our invocation this morning is Reverend Patricia Bethel. Good morning, Bethel. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, what a wonderful day this is. It's truly a day of resurrection. It's truly a day of victory, Lord God. And we, your people, we come to rejoice. We come to celebrate we come to give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, Lord, because it was because of you, your love, your plan of salvation, that we are able to come this morning and lift up, bow down heads. We're able to come and rejoice with each other. We're able to come and say, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for 
for the victory. I thank you that you suffered, Lord God, for me. I thank you, oh Lord, that you didn't come down from the cross. But Father, I can say thank you this morning because I have salvation. My sins have been forgiven, Lord God. Oh, we bless you, Lord God, this morning. We thank you because we, you live. We can face tomorrow. Because you live, all fear is gone. Yes. Because we know, Lord God, we know who holds the future. And life is worth the living just because you live. Yes. So we thank you, oh Lord God, this morning. And Father, as we come, Lord God, to celebrate, Lord, we bring every situation before you this morning. Those who may not even realize that they can have this victory in Jesus. We come, oh Lord, bringing those who are depressed and those who are oppressed, oh Lord God. Those who are out there thinking that there is no hope. But oh Father, because of the cross. We have all of those things. We have all of those blessings. We have all of your promises, Lord God, that there is no lack in them that fear you, Lord God. You say many are the afflictions of the righteous, but you bring them out of every one of them. And so, Father God, we pray that this day, this service, Lord, would be one where they can say that I made Jesus my Christ, my, my Savior, and my Lord. I made him, oh Lord God, Lord of my life. I made him king of my life because he is the Lion of Judah. I thank you, Father God, for all of those who this day will hear the word here and abroad from wherever this word goes, Lord God. And wherever your word is preached today, Lord, I pray that souls will be added to your kingdom. Yes, God. And so, Father, I bring whoever the person is that will bring the word today, Lord God, I pray that your anointing would be upon him, Lord God, that the message that he would deliver would be one that would provide whatever spiritual or emotional or whatever psychological need they may have, Lord God. Oh, we thank you for the souls that will be added, Lord God. We thank you for the burdens that will be lifted. We thank you for the yokes that will be destroyed. And we say, Lord, thank you for whatever you're going to do in this service. Thank you for your presence. We already feel and we know, oh Lord God, that it is because of you we can move and we can have our being. We pray for our moderator right now, Lord God. We pray for every associate minister, every deacon, every deaconess. We pray for every usher, Lord, every musician. We pray for all of those in the tape ministry and the sound ministry this morning, Lord God. We pray for everyone that will participate in any way in this service. And let them, Lord, do it with a spirit of joyfulness. Because you say, when we enter the gates, we are to enter the gates joyfully, Lord God. And when we enter your courts, Lord, we know that we can sing and we can rejoice and we can make joyful sounds to you this morning, Lord God. And we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, just lift your hands. Lift your hands in his presence. Come on, just say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you that you didn't stay in the grave, but you got up. And now I'm victorious. I have a right to the tree of life. Oh, we bless you, Lord, in this place today. And look at what the Lord has done. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Yeah, we feel you. We feel you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, we feel you. Come on, lift your hands just one more time. I just feel him in this house. Wherever you are, all over this Bahama land. Lift your hands right where you are. Just say, Lord, you're wonderful. Oh, we bless your name, Lord God. Oh, we glorify you, Lord God. You wonderful, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Coming now with our Old Testament reading this morning is Deaconess Catherine Dean, and she'll be reading from the Old Testament prophetic book of Isaiah, chapter 65, reading verses 17 to 25. We ask that the congregation please stand, and as she completes the reading, 
Jesus would like for you to follow by saying thanks be to God. Good morning, family. Happy resurrection. Isaiah 65, 17 through 25, the NLT version. Look, I am creating, I am creating new heavens and a new earth. And no one will even think about the old ones, the old ones anymore. Be glad, rejoice forever in my creation. And look, I will create Jerusalem as a place of happiness. Her people will be a source of joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and delight in my people. And the sound of weeping and crying will be heard in it no more. No longer will babies die only a few days old. No longer will adults die before they have lived a full life. No longer will people be considered old at 100. Only the cursed will die that young. In those days, people will live in the houses they build and eat the fruit of their own vineyards. Unlike the past, invaders will not take their houses and confiscate their vineyards. For my people will live as long as trees, and my chosen ones will have time to enjoy their hard-worn gains. They will not work in vain, and their children will not be doomed to misfortune, for they are, the, for they are people blessed by the Lord, and their children too will be blessed. I will answer them before they call before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. The wolf and the lamb will feed together. The lion will eat hay like a cow, but the snake will eat dust. In those days, no one will be hurt or destroyed. On my holy mountain, I the Lord have spoken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Come on, you say, I'm blessed of the Lord. My God in whom God bless. Ain't no devil in hell can. Anybody blessed in the house? Are you blessed of the Lord today? You got the blessings of Father Abraham today? Then come on, somebody. Let's give God some praise. Anybody got something you could wear? Anybody got something you could wear? Come on. Let's wave before the Lord today. Oh, we got the way then thing to take. We just glory in God, like Betty would say. We glory in our God today. We bless in him today. We bless in him today because we are the blessed of the Lord. He'll give you houses you didn't build and vineyards you didn't plant. I tell you, men will run into your bosom to bless you. Anybody know when God bless you? My God, you're blessed. You're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. And we are indeed a blessed people. Coming now with our welcome this morning is none other than Deaconess Keisha Russell. She's coming now to welcome you further into this great celebrated service. Good morning, Bethel. Now y'all know it's Resurrection Sunday. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Let's bless the Lord in this place. He didn't just get up, but he got up with all power, all dominion, all authority. And guess what? He's seated at the right hand of the Father, making what? Intercession for us. He's praying on our behalf, making sure that we are blessed of the Lord, making sure that we are highly favored in the earth. So that is enough to give God praise and thanks for I know it's Easter Sunday and y'all came in with your pretty dresses, but I have come to bless the Lord because he's been better than, better than, better than good to me. How many of you can say that? Come on, let me see you do a wave. Hallelujah. Don't think this just a usual Easter Sunday, that you came in for a usual Easter service. Ah, no, not today, not today. God is here to bless. He's here. Can't you feel him in this place today? Oh, hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. But I have come to welcome you. But I welcome the Holy Spirit in this place first. And I welcome you into Bethel. 
231 years old. Oh, we looking good, Bethel. We looking good. Still doing the work of the Lord in the world today. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's good to see you in the house today. Give them a little fist bump. Live streaming, we welcome you. You put in the chat, it's good to be here. Good to be celebrating with Bethel on this morning. And we have come to worship because Jesus is alive today. I don't want you to sit down in that seat with your hands folded on today. For you have come to what? Worship. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you could be here tomorrow. You know you could be here tomorrow. I don't know if I can see you next Sunday. So while I have the breath, I'm going to give God all that he deserves because he is worthy. Hallelujah. I feel you all a little low, but we can see after the praise team then sing and the word then go forth, I pray that every weight be dropped off in the place this morning because Jesus is alive and we need to exalt him today with our praise, with our body actions, because it says what? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Child, that don't sound silent to me. That sound like a lot of praise and worship going on. That sound like you can't help keep your hand to yourself. Your hands gotta go up. Your feet gotta move and say, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. So thank you, you are welcome into the house of the Lord on today. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Deacon is Keisha, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Y'all realize it's the first Sunday since our late pastor, the Reverend Dr. Timothy Stewart, has been first Easter Sunday. Anybody want to jump up and give God thanks and praise for his life? Come on, anybody want to say, Lord, we thank you for our pastor. Thank you for his life. Thank you for how you've kept him for almost 39 years. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you thanks, Lord God, for a man of integrity, a man who is worthy to be remembered, a man who is worthy to be celebrated, and a man who is worthy to be praised. I don't know about you all, but I miss him today. I miss him today. I miss me some Pastor Timothy Shaw today. But guess what? Guess what? That's all right because I got Jesus. And he's alive. And he's alive for everyone. He's some crazy gals. Hey, my God, we crazy for Jesus. We love him. We love him. We thank God he got up out of that grave today. And with that excitement, it's time for our offertory period. And Deke, man, look here. This, 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 this next excited machine. Listen, he coming now with the offertory. Deacon Dolphin, Terrell Dolphin. Come on, come on. Didn't he preach on Good Friday? Didn't all our preachers preach on Good Friday? Well, if y'all had a good time on Good Friday, let's celebrate our preachers. Come on, somebody, let's celebrate each one of them. He's coming now with our offertory period, and you can be God given. God, we thank you for this moment, this time to give back unto you. God, as we look back over our lives, there are so much blessings you have bestowed upon us other than the monetary blessings. God, you have blessed us with a peace of mind. You have blessed us with life and life abundance. God, you have blessed us with loved ones. You have blessed us with those who went on before us in the person of Timothy Stewart. And you have blessed us with cherished memories. So we bless you right now, O oh God, for our offering that will be lifted. We ask that you, O oh God, will give back to the givers, O oh God. Press down, shaking together, running over. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to give to this ministry, there are four opportunities for you to give. One, you can give to us through our Royal Bank of Canada account, our main branch account, the account number 2895688, or through our Bank of the Bahamas account. The main branch again, branch code 157, account number 135. 
0001435. Otherwise, you can give through an internal transfer if you have a Royal Bank account or a Bank of the Bahamas account, a bank to bank transfer if you have online banking from another institution, or over the counter if you happen to be in one of those institutions and would like to make a deposit over the counter. Or if you'd like, you can simply go to our website, Historic Bethel Baptist, and click on our Give button. That will give you an opportunity to give via credit or debit card. And you can specify exactly which ministry you would like to give funds to so that we can direct those funds accordingly. God bless you.
I tell you, the people was rushing like they going crazy. But look here, y'all. We got a reason to rush. We got a reason to praise. Any rushes in the house for Jesus? Any Saxons in the house? Any Valley in the house? Any one family in the house? Any redeemed believers in the house? Rush for Jesus, somebody! Anybody got rushing in their feet? That's all right. today. Your man, I so excited, Lord, I tell you. Some folk wasn't here last Easter. My God, but I still here. COVID took some people. Oh my God, but we still here. We got a lot to be thankful to Abba Father for. And y'all are even more excited now. It's word time. But before the word come, we have a New Testament reading. And that reading is coming from Acts the Apostle of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. And Brother David, I know you're ready. Our man's fellowship president. Come on, receive him as he comes now with our second reading. And then we can get ready. We're going to get ready to hear the word of the Lord. Good morning, church. The word of the Lord comes from Acts, chapter 10, verses 30. through 43. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. But in every nation, he that feareth him and waketh righteousness is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did, eat, who did eat and drink with him. After he arose from the dead, and he commanded to us, preach unto the people, and to testify that as he, which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witnesses, that through his name whosoever believed in him 
shall receive remissions of sin. To God be praised. Amen. Thank you, Brother David. I tell you, anybody excited about the word of God this morning? Come on. Put your hands together. We know that expect and anticipation is a breeding ground for miracles. And so we expect in from God today. And I'm so happy and delighted to present to some, introduce to those who may be watching via live stream, our preacher this morning, a seasoned pulpiteer, one who is a scholar of the word of God. He's no rookie to this church, nor this pulpit. In fact, he is a son of God, having been born, bred, and raised in this church. One who's been proven, tried, and tested. Tell you one whom the hand of the Lord is indeed upon. A, upon. He is a brother. And I could tell you, Bethel, I could tell you, um, viewing audience, that you will not be disappointed. Open up your heart. Open up your ears. Open up your spirit. And hear what thus said the Lord. What the spirit will say unto the church. He is indeed the husband of one wife. Nurse Lori, come on, Lori, wave for us. And Shelly, if you view and buy, you could wave wherever you are in Canada. And one, he's a, is, is the good daddy of our Shelly, Nichelle. And we want you to know, my brothers and sisters, that if you say amen, if you help him preach, he going to preach this Resurrection Sunday like he's never preached before. Put your hands towards him. Point your hands towards him. Say, Reverend Hutchison, preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the Lord use you. And so without any further ado, viewing audience and Bethel, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to present to this pulpit immediately following this selection from our praise team, Miss the late Miss Marion Hutchison, good sir, anointed vessel, my brother and friend, the Reverend A. DeWitt Hutchison, hear ye him.
the church say bless the Lord to Reverend Yvette McFall who presides to my other ministerial colleagues on the pulpit Reverend Patrick McFall Reverend Patricia Bethel to members of the diaconate on the pulpit represented by my friend Terrell Dauphin and to the deacons and deaconesses throughout the sanctuary, to our evangelists, to our musicians, to our ushers, and to you, the congregation of Bethel Baptist Church. God bless you, God bless us on this Easter Sunday morning. I want to speak from the New Testament Gospel of St. John, chapter 20, and we want to read verses 1 through 8. I am reading from the King James Version. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he stooping down, and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. I want to speak briefly this morning. Then cometh the morning. Bow your heads with me, O oh God of life and of love. We thank you for this preaching moment. We praise you, O oh God, that you have prepared us and prepared your people. May minds and hearts be pliable, open and receptive. And may this preacher die to self in the pulpit, so that life may germinate in the pew. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Then cometh the morning. The last eight days of Jesus' life were the most momentous in all of human history. In fact, they uniquely picture Jesus at the center of all of history. He enters Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. He suffers through the agony of Gethsemane on Thursday. He is betrayed by one whom he loved and thought was a friend. He is tried in a kangaroo court on trumped up charges. And then he goes to Cranion, Golgotha, the place of a skull, Calvary. The Bible tells us in the four Gospels that there are portraits of the sayings of Jesus, seven in total from the cross. The first speaks of his cosmic concern, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The second, Jesus gives a pardon or a respite to a penitent thief. Today, you will be with me in paradise. And then he makes provisions for his mother as the firstborn Jewish son is obligated to do. Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. He then cries out in despair, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatani, my God, my God, 
Why hast thou forsaken me? And then he cries out in thirst. I thirst. He shouts a cry seemingly of victory. Tetilestai. It is finished. And then the final, a crowd of exclamation and resignation. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The Bible says that he then bows his head and stops breathing. That's where we left Jesus on Friday. Then cometh the morning. Mary Magdalene, the story tells us, goes to the sepulcher. She is one who was enamored by and worshipped and loved and treated Jesus as any good disciple or follower would. She wanted to know about her object of affection, that one that showed her how to love because he showed her how to forgive. The Bible says that she runs to the sepulcher and finding the stone rolls away, she goes and tells two of the other disciples. We are left to imagine what perhaps she would have felt, the emotions that went through her mind as she struggled in that sprint from the sepulcher to where the disciples were. Some perhaps were still not necessarily knowing what Jesus was all about. The atheist does not believe that there is a God. The agnostic is still on the fence, struggling with whether or not there is a God, and if there was, what to do with it. The deist believe that there is a supreme being, but perhaps think that this supreme being is distant, remote, and uniquely unapproachable. The Christian accepts and embraces relationship. And Mary, in that short sprint, defines what it means to know and to believe that the Jesus of three and a half years, the Christ of history, has risen from the dead. Then came the morning. There are three unique words here in the Greek that are lost in the English. The Bible prepares us for this because Jesus knew that he needed the Greek language to convey and to portray the full meaning of what he wanted the world to know. The Greek language is the most expressive of all the languages. There are many words in the Greek for one word in English. In English, if I told my wife, Lori, I love you, guess what word I'm going to use in English? Love, I love you. In the Greek, eros is the romantic love. In the Greek, sterge is the familial love. In the Greek, Agape is the God-type love. In the Greek, philia is the brotherly love. But there are other types of love. But we are limited because the Greek is more elastic, more expansive. In the Greek, the Bible tells us exactly how these two disciples experience what they see and how they react. And so we see in verse 5. Verse 4, so they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. Verse 5, and he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. The Greek word for looking in is the word blepe. And blepe simply means that John, the first to arrive because he's the youngest and outruns Peter, looks with a glance. 
John looks into the tomb with just a glance, but doesn't go fully in. The English says, looking in. The Greek says, blepe. We are informed by what the Greek says because it tells us that John pays very little attention to what he sees. And then, verse 6. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth in the English the linen clothes lie. In the Greek, the word is theori. It sounds like to theorize. And that's exactly what it means. Peter goes in second, and Peter looks with concentration. He does not take a glance. He looks and he observes. And then the Bible says something else. And then it says in verse 8, Then went in also that other disciple which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. What is it about verse 5 and verse 8 that makes John believe? Well, the Greek word is Aden. And that Greek word tells us that John looks with perception and he looks with information and he looks with knowledge. In other words, John sees not glancingly, John sees not just with concentration, but John sees it with information and John believes. When we come to that story, the Bible tells us, blessed is he that does not see yet believe. But, but John's encounter with Jesus is so unique, is so distinct, is so profound that John leaves that tomb a believer. He leaves that tomb knowing that something supernatural, something extraordinary, something out of the realm of the possible. John is witnessing the greatest paranormal experience in human history. What he sees is the wrappings that Jesus wore when he went into the tomb. He sees the form of the wrapping undisturbed, the bandages not unwrapped, but he sees the form of a man but no head because the napkin that surrounded or shrouded the head is laying somewhere on the side, neatly folded. John sees a cocoon. He does not see the body. He looks Aden with knowledge and John believes. John realizes then that something supernatural has happened. The Bible says, and John believed. Bethel, this morning, we have come to this place where we know that the God of history, the Christ of all of our struggles, the Christ who has brought us to where we are, has come from heaven down. And he has come to save us from our sins. What Easter Sunday tells us is that Jesus lives and he lives forever. Yes, Lazarus died and rose again. Yes, Jairus' daughter died and was resuscitated. Yes, the widow's son died and was resurrected. But the Bible calls Jesus the first fruit of those who died and rose again. Jesus rises again, never to die again. That is the story of the resurrection. That is the story of Easter. That is the story of our faith. When the morning comes, you may be in a time of difficulty and darkness. You may be in a time of despair, but then came the morning. Morning always signals to us a time of renewal, a time of clarity, a time of refocus, a time of rebirth. Then came the morning. The darkness and despair of what you felt the darkness and the struggle of what you're feeling, the darkness and despair of how people treat you, the darkness 
and despair of your own limited conditions is dispelled by the morning. Then came the morning. Jesus got up out of the tomb on that early Sunday morning with all power in his hands, all power given unto him. He gets up. He gets up out of the tomb and he says, all power is given unto me. Why does Jesus say, all power is given unto me? Doesn't Jesus have power? Didn't he exercise power when he walked the dusty streets of Palestine? Well, the Bible shows us that Jesus' power before resurrection was delegated power. Whenever Jesus did something, he always prefaced what he did through the Father. Father, I thank you. Father, I pray to you. Father, I bless you. Because he knew that the power that he had was given to him by God, delegated. When he got up out of the tomb, he got up not only with power dunamis, but with power exousia. Jesus got up with explosive power, creative power, the power of fiat, the power that speaks and man lives, the power that speaks and man dies. He made the world not with something that existed, but with something that did not exist, the power of fiat. He says, let there be light, boom, and there was light, the power of fiat. Then he gets up with the power of exousia, the power of authority. Jesus had creative power, dunamis, dynamite. Then he has the power of authority, exousia. That was said to us and spoken to us in Revelation, read earlier by Reverend Levette in Revelation 5. Jesus is the lamb slain, who is the only one worthy to take the scroll out of his father's hand, the one who sits on the throne. Well, the scroll was the title deed to the earth. When Jesus got up out of the throne, when Jesus got up out of the tomb, he got up with all power because he knew that God had given him the title deeds to the earth. He had all authority. He had all power. And he knew that because authority, dunamis, and exousia was given to him, all power was resident in him. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign. Jesus lives. Jesus reigns. Jesus got up out of the tomb. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. I don't know about you this morning, Bethel. But I love the Lord. He has heard my cry. And he's pitied every groan. As long as I live and troubles come, I'll hasten to his voice. I don't know about you this morning, but lo, in the grave he lay. Jesus, my Savior, waiting the coming day. Jesus, my Lord, death could not keep him pray. Jesus, my Savior. He tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of Lords. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory, the Lord of hosts, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, all ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Then cometh the morning. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Ha.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us bow our heads right now. As we meditate on the word that has been preached this morning, as we meditate on what it means that this morning has come, this morning has come for each and every one of us in one way, form, or fashion. As we contemplate on our own personal lives and what the fact that Jesus rose again means to us. Hallelujah. And so I wonder if there's anyone here this morning you might be feeling a little lost. You might be feeling as if you really don't know what your purpose in life is. You might be feeling hurt. You might even be feeling angry about what's happening in your life. You might be feeling as if you're just living from one day to the next and you don't know what to do with your life. I believe that that's what Jesus came and died for. To give each and every one of us a purpose. To give each and every one of us something to live for. And as we continue to bow our heads and close our eyes, if anything that you've heard here from this wonderfully preached message this morning resonates in your heart and in your mind and you right now want to make a decision that because Jesus came because Jesus arose because he died and then he arose that you want to give your life to him right now I wonder if you would just raise your hands right now and say to the world, say to the entire world, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Is there anyone right now? Is there anyone? Hallelujah. Because we recognize that there are some, of us, some persons who are listening through the airwaves, we recognize that we want to give you an opportunity as well. If you would just pause right now as we together say a prayer, to lead anyone that wants to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we want you to repeat these words with us this morning. Dear Lord, thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for that he died for me. And thank you that he rose. Forgive me of all of my sins and wash me and make me clean. Give me new life and give me new purpose today. In Jesus' name, amen. As we continue to bow our heads, we just want to say a general prayer. Lord, we thank you for everyone that's heard and received your word today. We thank you, O oh God, that hearts have been strengthened. We thank you, O oh God, that minds have, made, have been made stronger. We thank you, O oh Lord God, for everything that you have done. We pray, oh God, especially for our preacher today. We pray, oh God, that you continue to be with him, continue to guide him, and continue to use him as you've used him today. Thank you, almighty God, that this word would not return void, and that this word will dwell within our hearts, not only today, oh God, but when we leave this place every day, oh God, that our lives will be changed. And so once again, we say thank you, almighty God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time for the word of the Lord God today on this Resurrection Sunday for our preacher. We give God thanks and praise. I tell you, tell somebody the morning has come. I tell you, I may have been coming here feeling down. I may have come in feeling sick, but tell somebody the morning has come. Amen, amen, amen. It's that time now where we want to go into our Lord's Supper, administration of the Lord's Supper. We're going to ask now our deacons to come and prepare the table. Our deaconess to prepare to serve. Reverend Patricia Bethel comes. We're going to stand together and read our church's covenant. Let's read together. Having been led 
by the Spirit of God to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord by faith and having publicly confessed him by baptism in the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we freely and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We pledge, therefore, by the aid of God's Spirit to live together in Christian love, to work for the advancement of God's kingdom through this church in knowledge, holiness, and mutual care, and to support its ministry by a faithful stewardship of money, time, and talents, and to sustain its worship, ordinances, doctrine, and discipline. We also pledge to maintain family and private worship, to rear our children in the nurture and spirit of the Lord, to seek the salvation of all members of our own families and of our acquaintances, and to strive for maturity in ourselves and in our fellow Christians. We further pledge to follow Christian principles of morality in our daily living, to be ethical in our dealings and faithful in our commitments, to promote the unity of fellowship by proper attitudes and careful speech, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, and to be zealous in our efforts towards the advancement of the kingdom of God here and throughout the world. We're going to ask Deaconess Natasha Seymour to pray for us at this time. Father, we come to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for stretching out on Calvary's tree. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Yes. Who shed his blood that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you for the blood that cleanses us from every sin. Thank you for your body that was broken, Lord Jesus. You said, Lord God, because your body was broken, we have life within us. So, Father God, for that, we say thank you. Thank you, Lord. As we come, Lord God, to sup from your table, we ask you, oh God, to search our hearts, oh God. And we ask you, Lord God, if there be anything in us, Lord God, that dissatisfies you, we ask you to cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Yes, God. We ask you, Lord God, to fill us with your spirit. Yes, God. Lord God, that we may do all that is pleasing in your sight. This is our prayer in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, the cross will always represent the love. tells us that he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he told them that this was the body that was broken by us for the remission of our sins, each ye all of it. And then he took the cup gave thanks for it and he gave it to his disciples 
and told them that this was the blood of the New Testament. This was the blood that was shared for the remission of sins. Yes. Drink ye all of it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Deacon is Nellie Strawn. Amen. Heavenly Father, we bless your name. We thank you for the cross of Calvary. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, uh, we remember Calvary this morning. Yes, God. But God, we thank you for Resurrection Sunday morning. Yes, God. Then came the morning. Yes, and Father, because he lived, it was so. And so, God, we thank you for this blessed sacrament, Lord. We thank you for this privilege that we have, Lord, to share, to, to eat of your body, to drink of your blood, Lord. Yes, God. And now, God, we just ask that you would cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds, cleanse our thoughts, cleanse our bodies, Father God. Oh, even as life anew has bloomed on this Resurrection Sunday, may that life bloom anew in us today, Father God. May we continue to walk in that newness of life, Father God. Yes. Search us, try us, know us, Father God. And even as we have eaten and as we have drunk, Father God, may we walk worthy, God, of the calling that you have called us to, to be Christ I am, to be just as Christ is. And so, Father God, we glorify you, we magnify you, we exalt yes, you, we lift up your name today. And we say, thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you, It's Lord. in the matchless, the wonderful, and the holy name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. And amen. amen and amen and amen. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. At just the time I knew him, he's always there. In the world today, I know that he is living. Whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy. I hear. 
let us look to the Lord and be dismissed. And now unto him who is able to keep us all from falling and to present us faultless before his Father's throne with exceeding great joy, to the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, henceforth now and forevermore. Amen. Join us for the following auxiliary meetings. Band practice, Monday, April 25th at 4.30 p.m. Baptismal class, every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. Bible study, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. Girls Brigade, every Friday at 4 p.m. via Zoom. Reach One Ministry, every Friday at 6 p.m. in person at the church. Prayer meeting, every Saturday at 7 a.m. via Zoom. Boys Brigade, every Saturday at 11 a.m. at the T.G. Glover School Pavilion on Horseshoe Drive. Men's Fellowship, every second and fourth Saturday at 6 p.m. at the church. And join us for Bethel Speaks to the Nation, every Saturday at 10 a.m. on 107.9 FM. As we join one another week after week in Christian fellowship, we are constantly mindful and prayerful for the sick and shut-in of this nation and of this church. Prayers are requested for Edward Fitzgerald, Dorothy Hanna, Sheila Hepburn, Jenny Hinsey, Sally Hutchinson, Barbara Jones, Constance Mackey, Sylvia Munnings, Marjorie Murphy, Charlene Neely, Shambula Pender, Carmetta Ramming, Francis Richards, Sarah Rowell, Nautland Simmons, Isabel Strawn, Murtis Sweeting, Jennifer Utiel Rule, Coralie Wilson, Lillian Wilson, Marie Winters, and Antoinette Wiley. Know that we love you, we are thinking of you, and we are praying without ceasing for you. As believers in Christ, we are instructed to pray one for another. Special prayers are requested for Sister Kenya Carey, Deaconess Betty Bostwick, Brother Bruce Delancey, Sister Charlene Lightborn, Sister Constance Mackey, Baby Kylie Malcolm, Sister Ruth Miller, and Sister Coralie Wilson. Moderator Ishmael Lightborn, the officers and members of Bethel extend sincere condolences to Dr. Gemma Rule and Sister Petrenda Bryce and the extended Russell and Roll families on the passing of the late Elva Russell Roll. May God grant you his peace and give you his strength during this difficult time. Happy anniversary greetings are extended to 
Brother Roscoe and Sister Agnes Ferguson as they celebrate 42 years of marriage. May God continue to bless and strengthen your union. Warm birthday greetings are extended to Mason DeVoe, Enid Smith Umbrister, Kalia Hyler, Earl Sturrock Jr., Anai Ingram, Kyla Jones, and David Strawn. Enjoy your day! Baptismal Events On Friday, April 29th at 6.30 p.m., there will be a pre-baptism service held at the church. On Saturday, April 30th at 7 a.m., the baptism of candidates will take place at the Western Esplanade. On Sunday, May 1st at 11 a.m., baptism candidates and those joining by Christian experience will officially be extended the right hand of fellowship by the church's leadership and will receive their membership certificates. Do you know of an outstanding mother in our congregation who has not yet been nominated as an honoree for Mother's Day? If so, please nominate her by listing the reasons you believe she is deserving of the award. All nominations can be left at the church's office or be given to an usher on or before Tuesday, April 19th. We invite you to join us this Sunday at our 7.45 a.m. or 11 o'clock a.m. worship service. If you are unable to join us in person, please tune in to our live stream at www.historicbethelbaptist.org or on Facebook at Historic Bethel Baptist. For more information, please contact the church's office at 323-5000.